Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things will help us make more great videos for you. So you might find that you can't use Gmail on your computer after the 30th of May 2022. Well, this guide tells you why and shows you a way around it. So you might have got this email from Gmail saying on 30 May, you may lose access to apps that are using less secure sign-in technology. To help keep your account secure, Google will no longer support the use of third-party apps or devices which ask you to sign into your Google account using only your username and password. Instead, you'll need to sign in using sign in with Google or other more secure technologies like Oath2, and then it gives you an option to click on learn more. So it says email software like Outlook 2016 or earlier has less secure access to your Gmail. Switch to Office 365 Outlook 2019 or newer or any other email software where you can sign in using sign in with Google. So the bottom line is, if you're using Outlook Express on Windows XP, Windows Mail that come with Vista, Windows Live Mail, Eudora, Outlook 95, 97, 2000, XP, 2003, 2007, 2010, 2013, or 2016, and you're using it to sign into your Gmail, then that's gonna stop working on the 30th of May, 2022. So you've got a couple of options though to carry on using it. Now, one option is to go into your browser such as Edge or Google Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Brave browser, whatever you like to use. And once you're in there, go to the address bar at the top of the screen, not the search bar in the middle, but the address bar right at the top. Click in it. If there's anything in there, delete it out. Type www.google.com, then press enter or return on your keyboard. Now, if you see a box here asking you to agree to something, then uh, click on I agree and then just go up to Gmail up there. And then once you're in that screen there, go to sign in there and click on that. And then just sign in with your Gmail username and password and use Google from here. That is probably the simplest way of changing over things. Alternatively, you can consider upgrading your email client, but in the case of Outlook Express, Windows Mail, Windows Live Mail, Eudora, and if you're using an older operating system such as Windows 7, Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, then you're not gonna be able to do that quite possibly. However, one option that seems to work for quite a few systems, I'm not saying this is gonna work for older systems such as Windows XP or Windows Vista, but it will certainly work for Windows 7, 8, 8.1, 10 and 11, and that is to download Thunderbird. So all you do is open your browser, go to the address bar at the top of the screen again, delete out anything that's in there, and then just type thunderbird.net. That's thunderbird.net, all in lowercase and no spaces. Then press enter or return on your keyboard. Now, if you've typed that incorrectly, you should see this screen. Go down to the green and white free download icon just there, left click once, and then it should start downloading. Now this bit might take a bit of time. It really depends on the speed of your internet connection. Whilst it's downloading, the programmers do give you an opportunity to donate to Thunderbird. Now, Thunderbird is free, so this is totally optional. And if you do find it useful, come back to the download page and consider donating. Okay, so once Thunderbird is downloaded, you can then click on the open file there if you're using Edge or the name down in the bottom left hand corner if you're using Chrome. Or if you haven't got something in the top right hand corner or the bottom left hand corner, then just click on the cross just up there to close down the browser and then go to any yellow folder, go to downloads and find in downloads Thunderbird setup and some numbers double left click on that and if you see a yellow shield at the bottom of your screen left click on that 
and now we should all be at the same stage. So it says, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Well, as long as it says Thunderbird installer there and the verified publisher is Mozilla Corporation, move your mouse over yes, left click once. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna minimize this window because it seems to be in the way now. So uh, hopefully you should have welcome to the Mozilla Thunderbird setup wizard. Left click next, click next again, and then click install and it should now start installing. This bit might take a bit of time if you've got a particularly slow computer. Just be patient with it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause this video and we're gonna come back to it when it's nearing the end of the installation. So there we go, it's coming towards the end now and hopefully in a few seconds, it should say cleaning up the birdcage, there we go. And uh, there you go, now it's finished. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the tick out of this launch Mozilla Thunderbird now, click on finish, okay. And I'm gonna click on the yellow folder, go to downloads and I'm gonna find Thunderbird setup. Right click once on it, okay. And I'm gonna click on the bin just up there. Now, if you don't have a bin up there, you might have a delete just here. So uh, click on either and that will delete the setup file for, for Thunderbird. That's no longer needed. That's just taking up space on the computer. So I'm gonna click on the cross just up there to close the downloads window. And then I'm gonna find the Mozilla Thunderbird icon on the desktop, double left click that. Now the first time you load it, it might take some time for anything to happen. So again, just be patient with it. Leave it for a few seconds, 30 seconds to a minute and hopefully it should then load. And here we go, mine has now started to load and it's asking for our name. This is our name as we want it to appear on any sent emails. So I'm just gonna type that in. It's then asking for our email address. So put in your Gmail address there. And then it asks for our Google or Gmail password. So let's just type that in there. Once we've done all that, then move your mouse over the blue and white continue, left click once. And there we go, we should get this screen here. Now it's asking us whether we want to set it up as IMAP or POP3. Now I'd recommend setting it up as IMAP, so do Google. That means it keeps everything synchronized to the server. So it means if your computer crashes, then your emails are saved on the server and all you've got to do is reinstall Thunderbird and it all comes back. Also, if you use your Gmail account on another device like a phone or a tablet, it keeps it in sync with that too. So it means if you delete an email from Google on your phone or tablet, it will delete it from the computer and the other way around. If you delete it from your computer, it'll then delete it from your phone or tablet. If you move it to a folder, then it will move it to the folder on your computer and the phone and tablet regardless of what device you've done it on. Also keeps a copy of your sent emails on all devices as well. So anything you send from the computer will be in the sent box on the phone as well. And again, vice versa. If you wanna select POP3 and keep all your folders and your emails on your computer, then you can do that by selecting POP3 there. You might find some of your older emails won't come through if you selected POP3 on the older system and you select POP3 on here. But never fear, the old system should still display old emails if you need to get into it. You might just get a password error box come up. So you can still use the old system that you was using as some sort of archive as such. So if you're happy with that, move your mouse over done, left click once. Okay, so we should get this Google screen come up now. So make sure that your Gmail email address is in the box above the blue next. If it isn't, type it in. If it is, move your mouse over next, left click once. Now it's gonna ask for your Gmail password. Again, this is the password that you typed in just a moment ago, and then click on sign in. Now, if you've got two-step verification switched on, then it's gonna ask you to do something here. Just follow the instructions on screen. So that's what I'm gonna do. And in my case, it tells me once I've finished on the phone, press the button below. So I'm gonna press the, I have responded from my phone because I have, I went to my phone. It asked me whether it was me signing in. So I said, yes, it was me. So I'm gonna click on that. And now, it's saying Mozilla Thunderbird email wants access to your Google account. Now you have to give it access. If you click deny here, then Thunderbird just isn't gonna work. So you have to make sure that you click on allow. So I'm gonna move the mouse over allow, left click once. 
Okay, so it now tells me account successfully created. You can now use this account with Thunderbird. So all I need to do is click on the cross just up there next to account setup. I can read through the privacy notice if I want. Once I've done that, click on the cross there next to Thunderbird privacy notice. And here I can see all my emails now coming in. So also in Thunderbird, you've got an address book there. And if you want to, you can import your address book from your old system. So you might have to export the address book from the old system as a CSV file and then just import as a CSV file into Thunderbird. So there you go. I hope this guide helps and thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video and if you did, hit that like button. If you think your friends, your family or your work colleagues might like it, then don't forget to share this on your social media timelines. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you find out about all my latest videos the second they're released. Hit that subscribe button, then hit the bell, then hit all. You can also find me on Twitter at CWTech and also find my website at cwtech.co.uk. Liking, sharing and subscribing really helps support this channel. Thank you very much.